All right, all right, all right. Hey ho, let's go. Welcome my legendary friends to this episode of Legends and Losers. And uh, wow, are we ever glad you're joining us today. We have such a fun show. So let's get right to it. On today's Legends and Losers, we have no, no one. We have no one? <laughs> we have none other than the legendary Zoltan Torkas. And uh, Zoltan is an incredibly dynamic guy, and he's one of the most uh, uh, iconic characters in Santa Cruz, California. And uh, he's, in a lot of ways, what makes surfing great and what makes Santa Cruz great. Uh, Zoltan is a professional surfer and surf instructor. And whether he realizes it or not, he's a category designer because I believe he is the first uh, uh, professional surfer magician. Um, so he's known as Zoltan the Magician. And he's born and raised in Santa Cruz. And for a few weeks in 2011, Zoltan was the most famous surfer in the world because he completed a surf trick that is a um, skateboard trick called a kickflip where, where you're riding the board and the board flips, does a 360 and you land back on it. And he's the first person in the world to have ever achieved that result on a surfboard. Uh, Zoltan's missions in, our mission in life is threefold, he says. First, he wants to revolutionize surfing so that it uh, uh, incorporates all sorts of new steezy. And for those of you who don't know the, the word steezy, one of my favorite words, it's when you combine style and ease, you're steezy. Oh, I think Beatrice is steezy. Uh, for those of you watching on YouTube, you can see, at least for the intro outro of today's episode, I have with me beautiful baby Beatrice the dinosaur. Can you say hi, B? No, now she's not going to talk, of course. So Zoltan wants to revolutionize surfing by incorporating new and dynamic trips, uh, tricks. Uh, he wants to help surfing become mainstream, so it's like football or basketball or baseball. And uh, Zoltan cares deeply about his community and wants to give back. And uh, this conversation is a hysterical, fun, silly, enlivening, and playful discussion with an incredibly creative guy, an incredibly uh, a fun guy. Uh, how many times can I say fun? Anyway, here it is, Zoltan. All right, so Zoltan, take us back to 2011. Um, I was in a, you know, a really dire need to do the world's first surfing kickflip and to the point where it had driven me crazy and I broke like 50 boards on my face. My friend's last word, words were to go out and do the kickflip. Sorry, I'm getting real crazy here. And it meant so much to me. And I kept doing it and doing it, you know, and trying it and trying it. And uh, I couldn't do it. And my older brother was up on the cliff and he said, I looked down. I remember him looking at me and shaking his head. And I'd be like, oh, man, I have to do this for Carl. I have to do this for my friend. It was his last words. And I took off on the wave and I jumped in the air. And it's like, you know, like um, Alice in Wonder or, what, you know, like uh, I closed my eyes, kicked the board, opened my eyes, and I was still riding. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you did it with your eyes closed all the time? Um, you know, I mean, at that point, I had tried <laughs> so many times that I kind of took a blind jump at it and couldn't believe it and was I landed and if you ever watch that video that you're going to show i'm riding for a second I, di I didn't even know i pulled it my eyes must have been closed and then I, I wake up on the wave and i put my hands up and i'm like wow and then i start surfing through and i do a hit the lip on the inside and the sound dropped out and i'll never forget that the sound went away and i remember just being so excited to scream my friend's name and i did it for him and uh for me it was probably the coolest thing that ever Happened to me my whole life, uh, you know, besides hanging out with my wife and kids, which nothing compares to. So. Oh, that's awesome. And um, when you did the claim, uh, whose name did you shout out and, 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 and why? That's, uh, that's my friend Carl Reimer, because his last day on earth, he told me to do the surfing kick flip and it's going to change my life because I was just a meat clerk. Um. At, at a supermarket. So he said, I'm going to be a pro surfer and all this stuff. And I said, you know what? My style is number two. I don't want to do it. I'm, you know, I'm just joking around. He's like, you can do it. So he actually got shot to death that night. And, uh, 
I went out to do it for him. I was like, you know what? I'm going to do this. And it didn't matter how many boards I broke, how cut up I got. I was determined. So when I screamed his name, I don't know if, what made the, the sound drop out. Maybe I screamed so loud I hurt my ears, but I couldn't hear nothing. And I was just screaming his name. <laughs> <laughs> and he was screaming back at you for sure wasn't he yeah no it was it was it was a, one of the raddest moments ever um i'm still still living off the high of it to tell you the truth so now, now you were obsessed with doing this long before you lost your friend how did you originally get obsessed with doing a kickflip on on a surfboard well you know i was kind of trying it and uh just thought it would be like... Oh, and can you describe a kickflip story as well, time to cut you off, but can you describe it for us exactly what it is? Well, it, it is where you go down the wave and you either catch air or ollie, depending on who you are, or a skater or a surfer. And when you catch air, you actually flick the surfboard or kick the surfboard on the rail of it, and it makes it twirl underneath your feet, making the fins go up underneath your feet. And it spins all the way around, and you end up landing back on the surface of your surfboard and surfing away. So the, you make the board do a complete twirl. A complete 360. Oh. Yeah. And it, it's something that I'm not a, I'm a surfer, but I'm not a skateboarder. It's something that skateboarders do all the time, right? Yeah. It's actually like one of the most fundamental moves in skateboarding. It means like, oh, wow, he's finally learning some tricks kind of thing, like your first major trick you would do. And, and, and so why is it so fucking hard on a surfboard if, if skaters can do it? Because the board's ten times as big. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> is, there, is there anything else to why it's so hard on a surfboard, or is it just simply the, uh, the size of the boards? Um, you know, I'm going to be totally honest. It is like, um, you know, in the cartoons when the, you know, the coyote steps on the rake. It's because the wind... And everything, when you go jump up in the air really high and you kick your surfboard away from you, that's all the danger begins. So then the board starts twirling and it flies back at your face. And at least for me, I'm, I'm ready to cover the cojones. So I cover the cojones up and then I take a smack to the face. And uh, that's usually how it all goes down. <laughs> and, and, and so how many times did you get hit in the face while you were protecting your cojones? Uh, while you were trying to perfect this move? Oh, uh, too many. Um, to, but at the end, you know, my wife and everyone was saying I, I started looking better and my nose was actually, the more I broke it, the, I used to have a huge bump on my nose and now it's got a little flatter. So <laughs> uh, We think your nose looks awesome. And the hat too. Come on. What about the hat? <laughs> we can take the kick flip. Free nose job. So, uh, hey, hey, Colin, do we do we want to take a look at the video the first time uh, yeah. Zoltan got this done? Yeah, let's cue that up. I think you might want to click it on uh, on speaker view just so I get the full screen here. If you're not, and here comes the share. Yeah. You guys see that okay? Yeah. That's crazy. Let's watch that again. <laughs> That's awesome. Again, Can you believe slow that? motion. There it is. There's the pump. And there it is in slow motion, the board doing the 360. Are you, You're at Steamer Lane, are you not, Zoltan? Or you're at Cowles? Um, I'm actually at Steamer Lane. You're at, you're at the lane. Yeah. yeah. And were there were there many people on the bluff watching you when you did it? Um, my brother and a couple, um, a guy and a girl, and I remember him because on the video, he always, that's what him at the end, it goes, first one, and then he turns to them or something and says something. And I came up, and I remember just being like, just in the video, I go, one more, one more, because I don't think I really did it. To tell you the truth, I'm still in, like, uh, denial. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then, um, obviously, there's a contest going at the time from uh, Volcom. And was it, it was 10 grand, was it not? Was what they were offering anybody who could pull this move? Yeah, they offered 10 grand to the first person that could pull it, and no one could do it. No entries, I guess, they had even had. So. And so, walk us through what happened, Zoltan. So, you know, Volcom's this you know, supposedly great surf brand, right? Champion of surf culture. 
and you you accomplish this incredible feat no one else can. You submit the video. What happens? Um. Well, what happened is uh, they denied me. They denied me, and they said, you know, it wasn't you know it wasn't what we wanted. We had our guy that was going to do it. They went through a whole thing of emotions uh, on the telephone with me. And uh, why were they giving you their emotions on the telephone? What did their emotions have to do with you winning the contest? <laughs> that's a great question. <laughs> that's where that's you know what that's actually where I ended the conversation when the guy got really emotional on the phone. And what did he start was, talking? Was to he about crying? <laughs> yeah. Was, did he have a shitty childhood? It was. It wasn't very manly, and so I it was like, "Hey, man," because I wanted to be like, a, at least be like, "Yeah, bro," like, like you know, like we did it, or I, I did. It. Even you know, even if he was going to deny me, we could have. But it got like to let's have a like a little bickering little thing or something weird. And I said, "You know, I did it for my friend, and I did it to revolutionize surfing, and I don't care about your money. I did it for surfing." And uh, he posted that. Volcom posted that as my words. And uh, thank God they did. And then the people spoke. Everyone went, what? We love yeah, so, that. So hold on. Before we get to that part, but we really do love that part. But I found it interesting in the ESPN article that I read that the ESPN reporter picked up on exactly what you said. So could, would you mind just repeating what you said to the guy that ultimately he, he posted and ultimately uh, you know, reverberated around the surf world and frankly, the sporting world? Um, yeah, no, well, because for me, it wasn't about money, obviously, it was to do it for my friend. So when he said that you don't get the money and he te- like kind of like, I, I don't care. That was the whole point is I'm not here to bicker about money. I'm here to revolutionize surfing. And um, that's what I was here to do in school. They called me into the office and they said, what's wrong? You can't sit still. What, what, what do you think you are? And I said, I think I'm a revolutionary surfer and I should be out surfing and I shouldn't be at school. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so I should fucking... be doing magic tricks. <laughs> I'm a fucking surf magician, mofos. <laughs> and speaking of surf magician, I just want to say, so when we were talking about the kickflip, yes, and we showed the kickflip where the where the board spins underneath you this way. Yeah. And I was thinking, well, there's also the kickflip where the board spins this way. Yeah. And I just, while we were talking, I pulled up another clip where you spin it that way too. You want to see this, Christopher? Yeah. Uh, this is this is uh, this is break, breaking information right now for me. Anyway, I, I have breaking. not. I have not heard this yet. Can you see this? Yeah, sure can. Here's this a, is amazing. It looks like Zoltan, you're suiting up here. Where you're getting ready to go do this feat? Uh, Steamer Lane. And oh, back, back, back. Here it is. Nice. Here it is. Wow. Are you kidding me? Yeah, I got. I I've been doing those since I was like 15, and that led to the kickflip. So you're spinning it like it's a helicopter. Yeah. On, on that first one, right? Like it's a helicopter blade going around. And then the kickflip is the other way, the 360 the other way. Absolutely. I was lucky to be one of the first, you know, few people doing those. And I, w- I stayed at the guy's house on a surf trip, Joe Cremo, that did the first. It's called the Pop Shove It. The, the Pop Shove It? Yeah. Yeah. Or, yeah. And so I, I learned the Pop Shove It, and then I learned the kickflip, um, because that was like the next skateboard trick to do was that if anyone could twirl the board – kickflip that was going to be like you were like uh, light years ahead at least in the skateboarding style you know yeah how is a, a, a kick shove it different from a kickflip or a, a shove it flip <laughs> <laughs> or a shove it right up your nose and <laughs> shove your board up your nose flip <laughs> i'm still working on the shove it kickflip but just a, a pop shove it like you said where you kick the board from tail to nose and land on it and spin around. And then the other one is where you twirl the board underneath your feet. Okay. And so Zoltan, what, what did the um, ethical, honorable uh, folks at Volcom do next? Um, well, like a week later, um, when it actually like went on, it got on sports nation. Okay. So let, let's break down what happened. So they say no. How did and, you first get attention? Yeah, how did the world first find out that they said no? 
Um, they posted it. Volcom? It, well, it was like a whirlwind of, I've never had this. You got to realize I'm just like, you know, I, again, I'm doing this because I love it. I'm an underground surfer. And then out of nowhere, I'm on getting called by the TV news. Like the moment we posted the video, it started getting watched by the, the whole surf world. So then, what, you put that video on YouTube, your video of the, of the yeah. kickflip. Yeah. So people started, it started to fly around the surf world. Yeah, but uh, how did people find out that Vulcan was stiffing you on the cash? And the skate world, he says. Yeah. yeah. Tony Hawk tweeted, Zoltan Torcos did the first kickflip in surfing. What's next? Handrails? And that must have got me at least a half a million hits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Tony Hawk. <sighs> yeah, I owe that guy, man. So um, he posted it. All these people were posting it on their things, like, you know, real amazing people. And uh, then they got the word got out. Oh, but he, that, that kick flipped in win. And I was getting interviewed by surf mags that led into, you know, like newspapers and then like, you know, Fox news and was coming to my house and stuff like that. <laughs> no way. <laughs> and, 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 and what were they asking when Fox news showed up at your house as uh, Zilton, what were they asking you? <laughs> they were asking me, you know, how I felt about it. And I was like, you know, all like, felt like I was some kind of a uh, surf ambassador. Like, you know, here I was talking about the future of surfing, you know, like some, like, and I was like, yeah, you know, I just did it cause I love it and did it for my friend. And, I dedicated it to him and I just wanted to stay real about it. And then it was up to people like you guys that really made the difference and whatever happened when everyone boycotted or stood but, up. Uh, so I remember it very, very well uh, here in Santa Cruz. I, it was all over our local newspaper, the Santa Cruz uh, Sentinel. And uh, the outrage in town, I mean, people in coffee shop, like it was like, it, it was the thing everybody was talking about for days, and and the Sentinel ran this headline with you know giant font, you know, in front of the newspaper and all this stuff, and and so immediately in Santa Cruz, everybody said, "Well, fuck you, Volcom, uh, we're not buying any of your product," and uh, all their revenue in Santa Cruz went from whatever it was to zero. And and the thing that was amazing is then that 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 began to spread across California and around the country, didn't it? Yeah, it, it was, I mean, it was I, the, the support and, and the banks that I have for the support of the people. I mean, it sounds really unbelievable, but that's really what happened, man. I had everyone jumping up and down, burning Vulcan clothing. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I couldn't believe it. I really honestly could not believe it, to tell you the truth. And because my, I just didn't, I didn't think I was going to start that. And the people it shows how rad people are when we unite and how strong we are. My so gosh. great. And so this yeah. pressure builds and builds. Uh, you, you go from being surf news to local news to national news to international news. And then there's at least you, you tell us at least a week there where you're the most famous surfer in the world. Right. <laughs> I, I mean, it was, it was, it was just ridiculous. The phone was ringing like literally in the middle of the night for things like in Taiwan interviews and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> did you do some of those Taiwan interviews? Hold on. Uh, I you did a, I, I tried to do every one till my voice. I couldn't even talk anymore. You, you <laughs> did every one, didn't you? <laughs> so and, great. And then, and then what did the magnanimous bastards at Volcom finally do? Well, out of nowhere, they, they called me up and they were like, you know, we don't really, you know, this like they again, they were like, ah, uh, but we're going to pay you. And I was like, no way, this is unbelievable. And uh, they recorded the whole conversation and everything. It was really trippy. They were like, you're getting recorded right now. And I'm like, okay. And they recorded it. And they were like, and I'm like, yeah, I'd be like high-fiving everyone because I was like so stoked. And I was so stoked on the people. And it was actually really cool that they did that. You know, like I, there's, I've never seen that ever in competitive history in like sports where Later on, even if the people did speak and say, oh, it was a bad call in the football game or whatever it was, they never let the guy win or get a, a check at the end. So that was 
I, I don't know. I still really like it, and I think it was cool, and I showed good sportsmanship. You know, that's so. fantastic. Well, and you were such a class act. I mean, I remember it. It, it became, you know, Colin and I, and uh, my brother Al, and a whole bunch of us uh, around town. Uh, Mike Block, you know, just a bunch of my friends. Like we were watching this thing play out. It was almost like watching you know, some thing, some, some news event play out on CNN. Cause like it felt like for about a week, every 12 hours, there was some, some, some new wrinkle coming out in the Zoltan story, right? It was just so, it just kept building and building and you could feel the whole town levitating. It was, it was outrageous. And then I will never forget. I wish I'd kept a fucking copy of it. The cover of the Santa, Santa Cruz Sentinel, when they ran the story about you getting the the um, the money, do you remember what the headline said? No, I I I, I don't. I don't. Well, I, I remember it like it was yesterday, and it was in when I say giant font, it was sort of like uh, World War Two ends kind of font. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, and so gigantic font, and it said Zoltan takes the cash. <laughs> Yeah, dude. And then there was this whole story about exactly what happened about this huge public outcry. Oh, uh, so it was because why I I couldn't remember anything because I was pretty much in alien abduction mode because of all this <laughs> all this media and all this stuff. <laughs> I, I was just like, oh my gosh, this is crazy! What's going on? <laughs> it was so cool though. I I couldn't thank the people and you know Volcom. What's so crazy now in retrospect is that. I mean, because it was hard. I mean, I cry. I mean, I was upset that I lost not about the money, but I was upset because I wanted to win it for the validation for my friend Carl. So I was upset. So I literally cried when I lost. Then I cried when I won. So that was a gnarly week. <laughs> <laughs> and so maybe take us back. Uh, you know, we obviously were huge fans, uh, as I know, as I know you know. And I remember at the time feeling. Um, like I'd, I'd really achieved something in life because as soon as this was going on, I, I followed you on Twitter and you followed me back. And I thought, wow, that's, I, I think the two greatest social media achievements of my <laughs> so great. social media life are, are when the Foo Fighters followed me. I don't know why they do, but they fucking do. And I think that's awesome. And Zoltan, the surf magician follows me. He's like, fuck, I, I'm, I don't care. That's it. I'm good on social media now. You're cool, man. I want to, I'm going to learn how to use that stuff. I'm still not very good at any of it. Um, that's what was funny with the whole Volcom thing. Cause they were like, he's a marketing genius. And everyone's like, are you sure he can't even, I could barely turn this thing on. I couldn't use the computer. I had to get on the phone. Um, and, <laughs> but the one thing too, was I wanted to add was that now that this has all happened, I really can thank Volcom because they gave me, um, a lot of recognition for this trick and the people gave me the recognition and thank, thank them for, I thank them for having the kickflip contest and inventing something for me to do to, that highlighted what I wanted to do. I think that's awesome. That's so great. I, don't and wanna, I want everyone to know I'm like aloha towards the movies. Yeah. Very cool. Very, very cool. And uh, we'd love to know uh, how you became Zoltan. I, uh, how you went from that kid who didn't want to be in school, you wanted to be out revolutionizing surfing to somebody who actually you've designed your life around your love and your passion. And so walk us through how you did that. Yeah, no, no, I'm glad you said that. Um, <laughs> as a kid, you know, um, my mom was Jeannie Houdini and she's a third generation magician. No way. She was on the weekend. Yeah. And competing show competitions didn't win Magic Magazine and won like best junior magician against like Japan and Italy and all these things. Um, but my neighbors were like Richard Schmidt and Dave Schmidt and people like that. And I was like, I want to be um, the evil Knievel of surfing like Richard Schmidt. Like I wanted. So was he, um, Richard was your, was your hero? Oh yeah. Yeah. He, and he always will be. He's always will be Dave Schmidt and uh, Richard Schmidt. And, uh, Walt and what's, uh, 
I, I, we want to hear what your experience, you know, from uh, at a distance, looking at Richard, what I see is just, you know, this incredible pioneer in surfing, incredible pioneer in big wave surfing, of course. And what I also, I, I, I got to love about him is because I'm, I'm a surfer and a business guy. He's a great entrepreneur. He runs probably, you tell me, the most esteemed uh, surfing school in, in the county, doesn't he? Oh, man. Um I wouldn't in doubt in the world. He's one of the most rounded watermen, most best listeners, best helper. He taught me, you saw I had that big group of people and what he taught me, I was able to pass over to your people that you brought me, the new students. And these guys were, some of them were twice my size and I was able to teach them technique for power. Um, and, so, and, uh, Colin, just so you know, we, um, Zoltan was, uh, we were lucky enough to have him take myself and a bunch of the GoBundance guys who were here for a workshop a couple of weeks ago. He was our surf instructor with one of his other, uh, uh, colleagues. And we had a, a pretty good group. What about 10 guys or so, Zoltan? Yeah. I mean, 10 or 12 guys. Schmidt, yeah. And yeah, that was awesome. the thing that blew me away, I mean, your surfing ability is, is, you know, beyond compare, clearly, uh, you're a world record holder. Uh, but you are an incredible teacher. Thank you. Thank you. That was, um, I guess big part of my story was I, 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 you know, I saw Richard and I wanted to be a revolutionary surfer, but also having a wife and kids, it's nice to have a career in surfing and where it's not about you shredding. It's about getting other people to shred and have fun and pass that on. So that's well, like, and, and, and I had this incredible experience of you. I, I, I don't know if you do this, so let, let me tell you. Um, I really wanted to see you surf, of course, up close, because I've just seen you on video before before we were together. And so I, I, I loved how you were fun and on waves when there were some breaks and the guys were getting tired or whatever, and you were doing some of your fun, uh, fun playful shit, and you had your big giant smile on your face the whole time. And you're laughing, and you're, you're like a little kid on a wave. Yeah, and the other thing I noticed, though, the smile on your face somehow manages to get bigger when it, when one of those folks who maybe has never surfed or hasn't surfed in a long time gets on a wave and they stand up and they, and they actually surf like you, you're screaming. You're, how is it that you're more stoked for other people? You know, you know, and it's it's something really organic. It's something that helps me connect with the ocean, like. It's say I, I took a while off of surfing and I could get a great surf session by myself and even land kick flips and do all these things. But then when I go back and I take someone out in the ocean that didn't think they could do it and you get them up, you feel like you're Dr. Frankenstein and they're alive. You know, it's like, I love that one. It, 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 it's, then I feel like I'm connected with the ocean and then I'm able to actually bring that and do better in my free surf sessions. It sounds really crazy, but it helps me connect in a, in a better way with mother nature and everything to help people connect. You know, and I, I have to thank you for it Zoltan because I've been surfing for about 10 years. And so I learned later in life and surfing as a sport, although I, I, it needs a new name. It's, we all know it's not just a sport. It's something way, way bigger, but, um, is the hardest physical thing I've ever had to uh, learn to do by, by a mile. And I quit a thousand times and I had many moments of being discouraged. Anyway, along the journey, many accomplished surfers, maybe not quite as accomplished as you, but certainly much better surfers than me would make me feel very unwelcome in the water and, you know, do all the nasty things that, you know, you hear about surfers doing uh, to beginners and stuff. And so, you know, you get this picture of the, the, the sort of sh- the expert surfer who's a complete douchebag. And the minute he sees a, a new surfer, you know, you hear, you hear the word kook and you hear all those other derogatory things. How is it particularly because you're a Santa Cruz native and you know, it's Santa Cruz is known for being a tough town to surf in. You're, you're completely the opposite of that. How, how does that happen? Well, um, I think I've, I've seen every side of it. I've seen every side of it and been part of, you know, growing up and getting hazed and having to work your way up in the pecking order. And then you don't see that so much now. It's a free for all. Um, and in a way it kept it safer that, that people weren't crashing into everyone. But now 
it's safer that people won't get maybe beat up. So I see all the different <laughs> levels of why it could be good, you know? I'm, I'm not here. I guess it's with age, you learn a lot. You're like, okay, and you get older, and you wouldn't want anyone to ever fight your kids, or you, you see these things, and you're like, you know, that's not good. And people don't realize is you act like that at your surf spots, and then you go travel, you're going yeah. to get that karma. There's, there's a lot in life. And the joy of just having fun with everyone and then, you know, not taking surfing serious. If someone burns you on a wave, it's not serious. It's like there's real serious stuff going on in the world and this is really mellow. Like on land, I got to deal with stressful stuff. So on in the water, my joy is to have the best time, maybe not get all the waves, but have the best time. Because it does, I mean, you don't get as many waves being cool, but I'd way rather have that opportunity and I get a surf a lot. So I know like my friends that don't get to, like they get to only get a surf on the weekends or something. If they get one of those waves, they're so stoked. So it's really cool. You got to share and be cool. And we're all there to keep each other safe and look out for each other. But it's, um, it's a learned thing. And I think it's the job of people. Like I learned that side of surfing from Richard to be cool. Um, Who? Hey, Christopher. I don't know. <laughs> Who's the best surfer in the water? Yeah, well, uh, uh, my friend Colin taught me a lesson early in my surf career, uh, Zoltan. He told me that the best surfer in the water was the one having the most fun. That is the truth, and I tell every student that, so they don't even worry. And I say, you're only competing against yourself. No one else matters anymore. It's just you and your experience, and even if you don't get a wave and pal around, you're just having fun, you're killing it. Yeah, exactly. and uh, I don't know, Zoltano. Do you know who Martin Daly is by chance? Do you know that name? That sounds very familiar. Yeah, uh, Surfer's Journal called him the greatest surf explorer of all time. And he's probably most famous for uh, discovering the Mentawai Islands as a surf destination in, in Indonesia. So Indo is Indo in the surf world, uh, um, essentially because of Martin. Uh, anyway, I've been lucky enough to be on a couple of uh, adventures with the uh, the great surf pirate, uh, Martin mm-hmm. Daly. And one of the things, he, he has the same attitude you have. And he says, you can't be defined by the conditions or your equipment or whatever your skill level is. Just get in the water and have fun. No, no, definitely, definitely. And then if you your surfing sucks, blame it on the surfboard. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Zotan, is there anything else you'd like to share with us before we um, before we uh, catch the last one in? Uh, no, no, no. This was too cool, and it was an honor that you guys let me be on this, and I appreciate it. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, wait hold on, wait. hold on. Colin's not done. <laughs> wait, he doesn't want to let hold you go. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. He's a magician. He's a legit magician. Yeah. Do you have a quick magic trick you can throw our way? Um, something you can show that's us? That's a great idea, Colin. See this? You see this? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> okay, that, that'll do. <laughs> oh, people, Thanks, man. If, if you're listening, you're just going to have to watch that on YouTube, Zoltan. You're amazing. We love you. Bless you. And we'll see you in the water soon, my friend. Later, bro. Thank you, guys. Thanks. Have a great day. Well, there he is, Zoltan, the magician surfer. Uh, we want to thank you so much for checking out this uh, Legends and Losers. And we would love it if you subscribed on iTunes, YouTube, or Stitcher. And we'd like to remind you that this podcast is not free. It costs a few minutes to give us a legendary review. We want to thank you again. You're sharing your reviews, your talking, your whatever it is you're doing is really working, um, supporting our mission to help people uh, design a legendary business and a legendary life. So thank you again for your support and enthusiasm for uh, Legends and Losers. You can find us on facebook.com slash groups. Well, there you go. (laughs) She's talking a little. Facebook.com slash groups slash Legends and Losers. And we'd like you to invite five of your friends to our Facebook group. And when you do that, send an email to blackhole at legendsandlosers.com with five in the subject, and we will send you the transcripts to one of our favorite and uh, most popular shows with uh, Bix Bixen. 
All right. We would like to thank Equity Directory, the invite network for entrepreneurs and startups exchanging talent uh, for work for equity. Harper Collins, Play Bigger, How Pirates, Dreamers, and Innovators Create and Dominate Markets. Our friends at OneLifeFullyLived.org, Dream, Plan, and Live Your Best Life. The nonprofit Kiva.org, Loans That Change Lives. Our buddies at NetSuite, number one in cloud ERP. And if you want to see me on tour with NetSuite, uh, go to legendsandlosers.com slash NetSuite tour, and you can check out the dates. Uh, hopefully, I'll be in a city near you soon. Uh, we'd also like to thank Richard Schmidt Surf School in beautiful Santa Cruz, California. Scotch. Remember, if it's not Scotch, it's crap. BellDestinationEvents.com, legendary weddings in Hawaii. Spiro, the sales app for salespeople and sales managers who like to make money. Coffee Roasters, uh, Verve Coffee in beautiful Santa Cruz. Pour some Santa Cruz into your coffee cup. Our friends in the UK at Positive Marketing, PR, Marketing and Category Design in London, Europe, and beyond. Today's information is provided to you solely for informational purposes. We must warn you that this oddcast was produced in a studio that does contain nuts. This oddcast is the sole property of the Legends and Losers Oddcast Network, and we would love it if you shared the shit out of it. Don't forget that Steve McQueen is Steve McQueen. Do not eat foods with ingredients that you can't pronounce. Listen to Chris Cornell. Don't be lame. Get out of the passing lane. Support your local category designer. In the event of a water landing, this oddcast may be used as a flotation device. Don't forget there's no such thing as a participation award. Hey, Colin, this podcast really ties the room together, doesn't it? And our apologies to Nick Halstad, CEO of Cognitive Logic. Sorry, Nick, we just ran out of time for you. That's it. Be legendary, my friends.